What is the relationship between these two angles? What are they called? It starts with an S. Oh. Think about it. They're supplementary. They add to 180 degrees or they add to pi radians. Okay. So how can I connect an angle and its supplement in terms of cosine? Okay. It's really easy. If we think about it like this. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. If I have an angle x, what's the supplement of x? I'm in radians, right? It's pi take away x. Pi take away x. Okay, so I'm trying to understand the supplement of x and what I can say with its cosine. Okay, but this is just a pretty standard trig expansion, is it not? It's a trig expansion. Um, when you expand trig expansions for cos, they're cos cos sine sine, right? So I'm going to get cos pi cos x. Is it plus or minus in the middle? Plus. It's plus because cos is backwards. And then I go sine sine. Happy? Yeah, looking okay. So here, what have I got? Well, I know what cos pi is, and I know what sine pi is. What's cos pi? Think of the graph. Think of the graph. It's negative 1 because here's cos. All the way is 2 pi. So here's pi, and there's my value, negative 1. You okay with that? So cos x turns into minus cos x. What's sine pi? You know this one a little bit quicker. It's 0, right? Because it goes whoop, like that. Bam, it hits 0. Okay, so this is plus zero. So now I have a relationship between cosine of a value of an angle and the cosine of its supplement, right? So if I were to let x equal pi on nine in this case, right, I would be able to say cos of pi take away pi on nine, that's the supplement of pi on nine, is equal to minus cos pi on 9. Do you agree with that? Like that's just a straight substitution here. And this connects the two angles I'm after. There's cos 8 pi on 9 on the left hand side. And there's minus cos pi on 9 on the right. Okay. Just keep that in your back pocket. Now I have a, a path to get from here to here. But now the next thing I need is, how do I connect this to an equation? Right? Because like these two are equal to, if I put this guy over the other side, it's equal to zero, right? How did zero come into this? I don't know anything about zero here. Hmm. Like what, what I'm trying to say is, right? This, which I don't know yet, this is what I'm required to prove, right? I'm writing this like so. Are you okay with that? Like that, I know how to get to that. That comes straight from here because my 8 pi on 9 is turned into that, that minus cos pi on 9. But how do I know that this whole thing is equal to 0? Okay. Now we're heading into polynomial land, right? What this is, is the sum of roots. This is the sum of roots, like that's in fact what it means. That's the way the question is phrased, right? I've added up all the roots, and this is what I've got. Okay. Oh, so that equals minus 9. Now, apparently, according to the result they're giving me, the sum of all the roots is equal to 0. Well, how, where do I get that from? How can I intuit that? And the answer is, you come all the way back to this equation that you got given, right? Now this is not a quadratic. It's not a quadratic, right? Um, but you can deal with it. In fact, and this, we will get to this when we do polynomials in extension one. You can deal with any polynomial and the sum and product of its roots in the same way that you deal with them with a quadratic, right? Um, with a quadratic, you just get two roots. Alpha plus beta, that's the sum, and there's the product, right? What's the sum? Minus B on A. Minus B on A. And the product? C on A. C on A. Okay. Now, this is really interesting, right? As we sort of um, generalize this, when we get to into polynomials, we do this for higher powers. This is actually not really sum and product of roots. Okay? They're actually all sums. It's just that the first line is the sum one at a time. And this is the sum two at a time. And if I had a cubic, I'd do the sum three at a time. So this is what it would look like if I generalized up, right? Um, my next Greek letter is gamma, okay? So if I had cube roots, I'd go the sum one at a time. There they are, one, one, one. To do them two at a time, I can pair them up in this many ways. Do you see that? That's all the ways I can combine the three roots in pairs. You see that? So that's the sum two at a time. And then what's the sum three at a time? There's only one way to put all three of them together. A, B, alpha. alpha, beta, gamma. Okay. Now, what's really interesting, and we'll prove this 
formally, is that these results are still exactly the same. Okay, and they generalize up. They always have A on the denominator. I wonder if you remember why from how we proved this result. Okay, and you're just taking each of the coefficients, you're climbing up and you're alternating in sign. Okay, yeah. But because there's four terms or like three terms, like you have to move down one for the C, like the C becomes... Three. Kind of, yeah. So <clears throat> A is always the leading coefficient. Okay, so in this case, because my leading term is Z to the 6, my A in this case would be 1. Okay? But it's a bit sneaky. This poly polynomial is missing a whole bunch of terms, is it not? It's missing a whole bunch of terms. There should be seven terms. The 6, the 5, the 4, the 3, the 2, the 1, and the constant. That would be seven terms. But I've got a whole bunch missing, right? I don't have any of the 5s. I don't have any of the 4s. I don't have any of the 2s or the 1s. I've just got this guy, this guy, and this guy. Right? So being that a is your leading coefficient, where's your next coefficient? Z to the 5. It's that guy, which is 0. Uh, okay. that makes sense. So the sum of roots of this polynomial is still minus b on a, which is minus 0 on 1. Okay? You see how this is actually something which we're going to formally meet later, so it's kind of a bit of a hack that you need to know it now. Um, that's why you probably see this question more in a trial than in the test that's coming up. Okay? But nonetheless, that idea is not that crazy to get. Like we have the, we have the building blocks for it. Okay? So here is what I would say. I would say that this guy here, right, being the sum of roots, I would say 2 cos 2 pi on 9. So this is all what I was trying to prove. This is where I'm trying to go. So now I'm actually starting by working. Two of those, and two of those, and two of these. That's equal to, and I would state, to make the, the connection obvious, I would say it's minus b on a, and that's the sum of roots. Okay, so now I can evaluate this thing, right? Um, this is minus zero on one, as we were saying, which is zero, okay? Since it's zero, I can divide both sides by two. No trouble, because zero divided by two, still zero. And then I'm going to substitute out my cos 8 pi on 9 because I don't actually want cos 8 pi on 9. I want cos pi on 9. So that leaves me with this. Whoops. Okay. You happy with that? I expanded, I divided by 2, and I swapped out this guy. Okay. From there as immaterial, you're pretty much at the result you're trying to prove. So I'm not going to write it down because I'm at the bottom of my whiteboard. Okay. But that's the substance of how that result comes about. Okay?